the number one thing in performance, whether both an opportunity and a limitation is mindset, right? It's always mindset. You, know, you can have the best diet on the planet with you know, grass-fed meats, you know, wild-caught fish, organic vegetables. However, if your mindset is toxic and you're fueling with stress and anxiety, all you're doing is creating organic, grass-fed, wild-caught toxic cells. In the mindset game, when you start to focus on the cans instead of the can'ts, everything begins to shift and you learn to create new ways to accomplish your goal. So what's your antidote, right, for helping people kind of get out of hyperarousal so they can then get in charge of their mind and, and work on their dialogue? Stress and fear are part of our existence. They're actually the, the gateways to success. What I've found in coaching people with this is... Mo well, Brissette, thanks so much for joining me on the Mark Devine Show. Brothers, good to have you here. hoo ya. Absolutely. My pleasure, man. Yeah. My pleasure. Yeah, how you been, man? You looking strong? Doing well. Yeah, everything's going well. Training's going good. Mindset's good. Yeah. Just it's it's been interesting because this has been the first really year, year and a half that I haven't had a season of competitions to train for. Oh, is that right? So, interesting. Yeah. 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 Have you retired from that kind of phase of your life? Not yet. No, I still have a lot of things I want to do. Mm -hmm. I'm actually going to it's not for me, but I'm I've got a client that I'm working with right now that wants to do rim to rim to rim in October. Oh, right. So I'm working towards, I'll be doing that with him, but it's going to be a really slow pace. But for What's me, the third rim, um, isn't it just rim to rim? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then you come back and you do it again. <laughs> so you go from one rim to the other rim, then back to the other rim. So are you serious? Yeah. Oof. Yeah. That's like, what, how many miles is that? Uh, it's 50 miles or just under 50 miles. But it's the and elevation. I think that, yeah, the elevation change is, is pretty significant. So, interesting. Yeah. yeah. And then my, I've been, I was in tactical sports for the last four years. So, I really want to get back into competing in the tactical games next year. So, that's kind of, that'll be my focus. Yeah. Fascinating. So, you're all about performance. You're the chief performance officer over at Brute Force. Tell us about your view of what performance is. What does it mean, you know, to attain either peak or optimal performance? Yeah, for me and with with what I've done in my endurance career over the last 24 years and working with different individuals, various people and various abilities in sport, my motto is, and it's the shirt I'm wearing, is to stay ready. You know, I want to be able to be ready for whatever event or whatever life event happens at any point in time. So to be in optimal performance is really, you know, it's, it's a holistic approach. You have to make sure that your stress is managed. You have to make sure that your sleep is in intact, that you're hydrated, that you're eating properly, that your movement is dialed in. What does that mean? That means, are you focused on one thing, maybe strength? Are you focused on power? Are you focused on endurance? Or are you integrating all of those into a smart program that includes mobility so that, you know, if like for me, the way I train my body is that, you know, if someone says, Hey Mo, do you want to come do, you know, this, this 50 mile ultra next week? I can say, yes, I can. And I can go do that. Or if it's something that requires me to pick up a heavy load and do housework or something like that, I'm ready for that too. So in, in my mind, peak and optimal performance is really being ready for whatever life throws at you. Yeah. I, I love that. Very much aligned with the seal fit philosophy. In fact, to see you, you know, just jump into the Kokoro event and just thrive in it you know, is a testament to that hybrid multidimensional training that you do. And I think everybody would benefit from that. It's so, it's so important to, you know, leave no stone unturned. I think one mm -hmm. of the things, and this will lead to a, my question, one of the things that prevents people from doing it is they think it requires all these specialized skills, but that's not true, right? What's your perspective no. on Because from SealFit perspective, it, it's actually pretty simple. Listen, if you're going to do something like an Ironman, yes, then you need to be focused on your swim, your bike, and your run. That's another story. But even with that, you, know, you still have to implement the foundations of strength, of power, of endurance, of mobility. So like for me, when I was training for Kokoro, I just I trained my system the way I, I would for anything else. And that enabled me to physically be ready for whatever happened. But along with that, you you know this, I mean, you created the program. Like when you do things like that that are designed for you to fail to see how you mentally show up, that's where the test happens. Right. You know, when I used to race Ironman, I coached Ironman for a decade, and I still coach people to do Ironmans. You know, you could be the fittest human out there, but if your mental game is not strong and something goes awry that you didn't pre-plan for, mm -hmm. that can really ruin the whole day. And I've watched that happen with clients. Not my clients, but I've seen other people's clients. So like, for example, one of the things I would do when it would come to, to training for that race is 
I would start with my client about four to six weeks prior and say, okay, I want you to go from the time you wake up until the time you cross the finish line, everything that could go wrong with your swim, your bike, and your run. And then I want to mentally figure out a way to overcome that thing. So that way, if and when it happens, you already know how to do it. So, you know, training mind and body is critical just always. We used to do that in the SEAL teams. Obviously, you visualize success, but you also have to visualize the potential, you know, obstacles <laughs> and and have the contingency plans ready. And it's not just like writing them down in paper or, or noting what they are. Like you, you practice them in your mind. So athletes can do the same thing. You're hitting on a, probably a key point. Like the, the number one thing in performance, whether both an opportunity and a limitation is mindset, right? It's always mindset. What are the key ways to train mindset from your perspective? It's a daily practice. You know, with me, with regard to just life, I work on my language reframing in the mindset of can't versus can. You know, we, we tend to think in absolutes. We've been taught to think in absolutes, like nevers and always. Because language is dualistic, right? Up versus down, left versus right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. But, you know, before I moved to Colorado and took over Brute Force, I helped run a foundation in Dallas, and we worked with critically injured veterans and civilians. Wow. And you could imagine someone that has experienced a traumatic event and say they're in a wheelchair. They, right. you know, they've lost the ability to use their legs or they've lost a leg or they've lost both legs. And a doctor or quote expert will say, you'll never walk again. This will always be your life. And, and then that mindset sinks in of, I can't. Yeah. The medical system is going to immediately say, you can't do this. Right. In our mind is like, why not? You know, so let's mm -hmm. try this. Let's see what can happen. So the mindset of reframing from can't to can of, Hey Mo, I can't walk. I'm in a wheelchair. Okay, well, what can you do? Can you take a step? Not yet. Okay, can you lift your leg? Yes. Okay, then we're going to start with that. Mm -hmm. Can you hold a plank position on your knees out of your chair? Yes, I can. Okay, we're going to start with that. In the mindset game, when you start to focus on the cans instead of the can'ts, everything begins to shift and you learn to create new ways to accomplish your goal. It goes with sport. It goes with relationship. It goes with work and any type of performance. But really eliminating in mindset, eliminating the can'ts, eliminating the word never. And even for me, I do this and I've taught people to eliminate the phrase I have to. Mm -hmm. Because when you think about the word I have to, when we were children, when we were being programmed between the ages of three and seven, you have to do all the things you really didn't want to do. Like you have to be good. You have to you know, go to bed. You have to do your homework. Mm -hmm. You have to eat your vegetables. Conversely, you get to do the fun things. You get to go right. to recess. You get to save. So reframing like even the stuff like i have to go to the store today no i get to go to the store That's i have right. to go through this process no i get to go through this process so when you can cultivate that mindset in your daily life when it comes to a sporting event or something like kokoro or something like a really hard presentation where you might be freaking out because you're about to get on stage in front of a bunch of people or have this really big presentation you cultivate the mindset of get to and i can and that shifts everything in your system i love that I have to eliminate the word never from my language. <laughs> I get to exactly. Oh, man. You know what? One of the big things when people hear this, they're like, yeah, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. But then they're bombarded with stress and they haven't developed you know, the capacity to handle stress. So what's your antidote, right, for helping people kind of get out of hyper arousal so they can then get in charge of their mind and, and work on their dialogue? So the first is breath. Breath is key. If you can start with breath, and when I teach people about this, when I speak about mindset and breath work, you know, the very first thing you ever did and the last thing you will ever do in your life is take a deep breath. So if you can pay attention to it and put some intention in the middle, then life starts to work better for you. So starting your day, as soon as you wake up, I don't have time is not an excuse. You could set your alarm for 10 minutes earlier. You can take 10 breaths. You can do five minutes of box breathing, of the tactical breathing that, that you teach that we all know. That will reduce your cortisol levels. That will reduce you from being in what's known as a beta sympathetic high fight or flight nervous system state into an right. alpha nervous system state where you're calm and relaxed. And that's where things can happen. So the breath is the key component to this entire process. And then once you do the breath work, what I do, like when I've worked with people, I will literally have them set an al alarm on their phone once an hour all day long. It simply reads breathe. So wherever you are, yeah. whatever's going on, you don't have to stop. Just put attention into taking 10 diaphragmatic box breaths and watch how your arousal starts to drop down. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to that mindset of being stressed out, man, recognize it. You know, like I'm, I'm 49 years old. And if I started this journey, if I started working with you, like, Mo, you got to really get, get your stress in check. 
okay, well, I've got to unwind, let's call it 46, 45 years it of ways happen. of thinking. Yeah, not so it's not going to happen overnight. And the, what I've found in coaching people with this is it's like saying, I'm going to eliminate fear or we're going to eliminate stress. So that's not good. That's not possible. You know, stress and fear are part of our existence. They're actually the, the gateways to success. But allowing yourself to go, okay, I'm going through this process of learning and I know I'm going to revert back to old ways. So when I start to get stressed or I start to negatively react to any situation, I don't beat myself up about it. I simply become aware of it and then I choose to redirect into something that's going to help manage that stress. That's the key to it. And I feel like the, the people that I've worked with and spoken to, once they understand that, hey man, it's okay. Like you're, you're going to react. You know, I teach this for a living. I still react, and I, but I get to catch myself. You know, it's like, it's like meditation. The point of meditation is not to think about nothing. It's to decrease the space and time between those random thoughts. That's all it is. So it's the same thing with managing stress is number one, connect with your breath. Number two, start to reframe your language from the can'ts and nevers and always into something positive and then be ready for it. You know, if you know you're going to have a day, I, I teach this as well. Rehearse your responses to those emotional triggers. Mm -hmm. You know, if I know that we're, we're about to go into a meeting and I'm going to be charged up because I'm not really happy with what's going on right now, I've got to rehearse my response to that individual, to that situation. So that allows me to step into it with more confidence and clarity and not waiting for something to happen. Hi, Mark Devine here from SealFit. After two years of development, I'm super stoked to announce the launch of SealFit supplements and our first product, SealFit Electro Greens. This is the highest quality organic greens you can find combined with electrolytes into one powerful supplement. Take with eight ounces of water in the morning or add to your smoothie to get your day kicked off right with the proper nutritional supplementation and hydration support. And you can also use it as a pick-me-up booster during the day or after a workout. It dissolves immediately, and believe it or not, it tastes great. I've had many testimonials already saying it's the best-tasting greens that they have ever tried. So, hoo-yah, sealfitsupplements.com, or you can find it on Amazon by searching for Sealfit Electro Greens. Hoo-yah. Let's do this. Divine out. That is delicious. I want to come back to mental rehearsal in a moment because you know, you've already touched on three of the big four skills, right? <laughs> Breath control, <laughs> mental management, essentially managing your internal dialogue and your, and your languaging. And then the third is imagery. But I love this um, metaphor. You said that fear, was it fear and stress are the gateways? Yes. Well, you could also flip that and say fear and stress are the gatekeepers to success. Yeah. And so you're gonna you're always gonna come up to that gate. Everybody's gonna yeah. come up to that gate. And the trained individual will know what the key is that opens the gate. And it's always right, the positive affirmation, I can, I got this, this is a great opportunity, I'm gonna learn from this. And you bring that to the gate and the, and the door swings wide open. And then you step through. And on the other side is learning and growth. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's it. Like instead of hoping that it doesn't happen, look forward to it. That's your greatest teacher. The obstacle is the way, like Ryan said. It hundred percent is. Yeah. And you might just get your ass handed to you on that day with Good. no resolution. <laughs> yeah. There's no positive outcome that you that you experience. <laughs> there is lesson in that. And maybe that lesson is patience. Maybe that lesson is who knows. But there's a lesson in everything. Right. We're here for the lessons, not for the ease. <laughs> if you if you take the easy boat, easy street all the time, then you're gonna miss the most important essential lessons and the juice of life. So embrace the suck and go for it and, and you know, go to the gate of fear and stress and just, you know, unlock it with optimism, positive, you know, expectation of a really cool lesson, even if you get your ass handed to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you use the term adaptive capacity. Let's talk about that. What is adaptive capacity? Adaptive capacity is our way of saying building your physical and mental body under stress so that when stress happens to you, it has less of an impact on your system overall. Is it just resilience? Is it another way of saying resiliency? Or? It can be, yes. It is another way to say re resiliency. But what it is, is like if I'm training for a marathon, for example, if I just go out and run 15 miles on day one, I'm going to be beat up. My form is going to break down. I'm going to be excessively sore. But building up over time, you know, miles, 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 strength, 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 
that adaptive capacity so that when I go run 15 miles, it doesn't have as much of a negative impact on my system overall. And so when you can train that, like the way that we train, we work our programming at Brute Force on our app and just how we hope to coach people to use our equipment and our stuff is that you know, when you train with these things, when you train with something that's an odd object or uneven or something like that, that's improving your adaptive capacity to handle something that feels a little bit different, something that doesn't feel quite symmetrical and right. So that when- that, That's you know, what Brute Force specializes in, right? That odd object or unstable load stuff. Yeah. Yep. Odd object, unstable loads. Yes. Okay. If I'm constantly doing something that's always symmetrical, and life happens to me and I've got to do something that's off balance where one side's heavier than the other. My system doesn't know how to handle that load. Well, I'm not going to be able to, to perform my best. And mm -hmm. in training in a way that you can build your body and your mind so that you can handle anything at any time, your adaptive capacity to handle that stress increases. Mm -hmm. So we're on the topic of adaptive capacity and unstable load. Why is it that... Uh... Peter Atia and Andy Huberman are all raving about rucking. Yeah, it's kind of the ultimate training apparatus and protocol, in my opinion, and in theirs as well. The beautiful part about rucking is you, know, you can really just use anything. You can put a sandbag on your back. You can get a backpack and put some weight in it. The thing that's great about it is that unlike carrying like a farmer's carry with dumbbells or kettlebells or even wearing a weighted vest, like the beauty of a weighted vest is the weight is evenly dispersed front and back. However, once you start to fatigue, you're still going to have a bit of hunching forward, whereas the ruck has a tendency more to open up the body, to open up the trunk, to keep you in that neutral spinal position where we're, we're strong and we're stable. So that, yeah, we can open our bodies up, we can open our hips. With Peter and with Andy, a lot of the things they talk about as well is longevity. And that's one of the things that we preach as well. Mm -hmm. And so when you yeah, think about it, like a majority of life pulls us forward. You mm -hmm. sit in a desk, you sit in your car, you sit when you go to the gym. Even I, with, with athletes, if you're a cyclist or a runner, mm -hmm. yeah, it's hunching you forward. So pulling you open with a ruck is a beautiful experience because it's automatically opening up the core. It's opening up the lungs for more mm -hmm. airflow. And then you can take that ruck and you can use that as a total body workout as well. Oh yeah. You can literally do like cleans and squats with the weighted ruck. So if you're out in the wilderness, yeah, I mean, that's... I love those types of tools because, you know, I've always been saying that you're, wherever you are, there's your gym, right? You got four limbs. You can push, pull, climb, run, jump, crawl, right? Do burpees. Exactly. You don't yep. need a gym and a fancy membership and shiny machines. Now you just add a simple sandbag and a ruck to that, and you have literally countless, hundreds and hundreds of different exercises at your fingertips. Just throw it in the trunk of your car, and you're, you're just a mobile training unit, MTU. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. I trained that way for six months for an event, but when I was still in Dallas and I mean, for six months, I trained almost every day and all I did was ruck and use my sandbag. And, you know, I did great at the event. And also when I went back to using traditional barbells, deadlift squats, et cetera, I was just as strong. So, you, know, you probably even gained because your core was stronger. Oh, absolutely. 100% it was. Yeah. I can't not ask about nutrition, you know, for a performance expert like you. I know there's a ton of information about nutrition out there, but I always like look at nutrition more from like a principle base rather than like, you know, prescription. Mm -hmm. What's your attitude toward nutrition and supplementation? Yeah. So in order of importance, it's sleep, stress, then nutrition, then movement, because you have to fuel your body properly. You know, I've studied holistic nutrition and integrative medicine since 2004, so 20 years now. I've tested almost every dietetic theory on myself just to see and worked with a, a hundreds of folks as well. What I found to be the most effective and efficient is kind of a, either a modified paleo type of nutrition plan and or an animal base, not carnivore, but where you're eating an ample and like an appropriate amount of clean proteins and supplementing that with fruits and some vegetables and like white rice and potatoes and things like that. I want to get your perspective on carnivore because it just seems to me that you're, you're just going to be missing a lot of micronutrients if all you're eating is meat. Yeah. If you're doing it, you know, kind of a true quote carnivore to my understanding when I studied it and tried it, that's where you're, you're eating the really the fattier cuts of meat. So you're getting your fat soluble A, D, E, and K. And then you can also supplement in the organs. So if you don't like to eat liver, you can do, you know, like, you know, we've got a actually a really great organ complex that gives you the vitamins of the liver, of the kidney, of the spleen, of the heart. So essentially that then becomes your multivitamins that gives you the micronutrients. But at the same time, you know, like, like with anything, you don't want to get too dogmatic and strict with it. So, you know, it's like keto. Keto is great until it's not. 
So with carnivore, it's got to be a balance. You know, there, there's a season for a reason. You know, there's a reason fruits look the way they do. They're appetizing. They're there for us to eat. There are cruciferous vegetables that are good for us. With nutrition, it's finding out what works with that individual because everyone is different and everyone's needs are different. So what might work for me might be a little bit detrimental to you. So, you know, in nutrition, you know, the first thing we need to address is honestly, it's looking at your gut health and healing your gut if needed. You know, if you've been on antibiotics, if you've been eating processed foods, anything like that, like we need to look at the microbiome and see like, okay, what do we need to do to cultivate a healthy bacteria and flora and, and environment so that you can digest those foods? And then we build out from there. But I'll tell you this, I, I learned when I really started diving into mindset, I took one of Joe Dispenza's eight week courses and he said a beautiful thing during that course, which was you, know, you can have the best diet on the planet with, you know, the grass fed meats, you know, wild caught fish, organic vegetables. However, if your mindset is toxic and you're fueling with stress and anxiety, all you're doing is creating organic grass fed wild caught toxic cells. Right. So, yeah. So teaching the body and also giving the body a chance to, to do what it does. You know, we've had this massive misconception in the bodybuilding phase of the early 80s or mid 80s where you, you need to eat six times a day, six small meals. That might work for some, but, you know, throughout the course of history for thousands of years, we somehow subsisted on <laughs> on breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Sometimes just lunch and dinner. Sometimes just one meal a day and sometimes no meals a day. The body is extremely adaptable, right? That's 100%. Great. Absolutely, yes. And what about fasting, intermittent fasting? What's your take on those? I love intermittent fasting. What I talk to people about the caution I use when I talk about this is that it is a stressor. So, you know, if you're going through a hard time in life, if you've got a lot of stuff going on, that is not the time for you to go into an intermittent fast. You know, ladies, if you're around your cycle, if you're premenopausal or going through menopause, that is not the time because the beauty of, of an intermittent fast or a fast is that cellular apoptosis. Well, you need to be in a, in a quote, starved, stressed state in order for that to happen. So intermittently fasting, I typically have people, or if I do it, I'll start out just one day a week on a day that, you know, I don't have a lot going on and just allow my body to, to ease into it. How many hours does it need to be? There are different uh, theories on that. Like for men, you know, one of the goals could be 12 to 16, even sometimes 18 hours. I've done about 14 at most. Females, just because again of hormones and things like that, it's usually around 10 to 12 hours. So, you know, very simple. You eat your last meal at 6 p.m. And then, you know, you go to 6 a.m. That's a 12 hour fast. And then you can give it until maybe eight or nine and then you fuel and then track yourself. How do you feel? How's your clarity? How's your cognition, you know, energy, training, things like that. And you get to become the detective and create the blueprint for what works for you. I have a, a sponsor called Lumen and they talk a lot about metabolic flexibility. They test your breath and they determine, you know, hey, are you burning fats, carbs, and they tell you which one you need, you know, what type of food you need to do or what kind of movement you need to do to, to maintain metabolic flexibility. What, what does that mean, metabolic flexibility? It means that you have the ability to, to choose whether you're burning primarily carbohydrates or fats for your energy source. So you get to choose it. You can go back and forth. Your body has the ability to kind of switch back and forth at will. Correct. Yes. And it, it's all based on how you eat. You know, like for me, again, when I was racing Ironman and even the, the stuff that I do now, the long endurance stuff, you need to be more fat adaptive, not necessarily keto, but you need to have fat being the primary source of fuel because there's only so much carbohydrate that you can ingest before you run out of that energy source. So being metabolically flexible so that if I need to go do something long and endurance based, my body has the ability to do what's known as glycogen sparing. Even if I have been you know, eating low carb and I introduce more carbohydrates in that event, my body is, because it's been trained to, it's going to burn more, more fat versus carbs at that aerobic state. It's the ability again, for your body just to, to go up and down and use whatever energy source it needs to. What are ketones? It's a process. Once you essentially to kind of keep it simple, once your body starts to utilize fat for fuel, they're burning ketones as energy sources, as, as stored fat. Is a ketone fat or is I've heard that ketones have like more energy than fat. And so is it something your body naturally produces or can you ingest it? You can, you can ingest it. There, there are exogenous ketones. Like there's a, that supplement ketone IQ is a great way to, to start to implement that as well. But you have to understand that even if I'm, if I'm using something exogenous, which a lot of people do, you still have to start eating that way to get your body to shift into burning 
using more of those ketones from for energy. And you get that from being more fat adapted. And fat adaptation means you're just teaching your body to burn fat. In order to do Correct. that, you got to eat more fat, right? Correct. Correct. Eat more fat. You can reduce your carbohydrates and you don't have to go into strict ketosis. There is a moment, like if you really want to get into it, I've tested it myself. I got myself into ketosis in about three days where I just severe, I just cut out all of my carbohydrates. I consumed an, a moderate amount of protein. I consumed, you know, fats, avocados, fatty meats, and things like that. And then I would work at a low, steady heart rate. I would get on the treadmill, incline treadmill, and just walk for 45 minutes or so, light movements, not pushing myself too hard so that I would stay in that zone. And once I depleted the carbohydrate stores to a degree, then I went into what's known as ketosis, and I was fat adapted. And once you stay in that state for a while, your body gets used to using that source of energy. It's kind of a catch-22 because it's really great. You have a lot of mental clarity. You can go for a while without eating. Your energy is stable. You know, you start to notice differences in your in your body as far as like body fat loss and things like that. But if you're trying to perform, it's a different story. Yeah, yeah. I think we found that with Seal Fit. A lot of guys who were doing the keto diet and in a state of ketosis, man, they were just flaming out on the high intensity workouts and you know CrossFit. They were, they were just failing at that stuff. So that's where I think it's key to be flexible, right? Metabolic flexibility means you can go the long, slow, hard stuff, but your body will then shift you know, to be the performance engine that it needs to be to, to perform in a high, high speed workout. Right. Absolutely. So stress is a big deal. We talked about breathing mindsets, a huge deal. Uh, we talked about movement, you know, hybrid, you know, unstable load. We talked about nutrition. What about supplementation? We just barely talked about that. Do we need supplements? I mean, most people, it seems like aren't getting the right nutrition, you know, micronutrient load. So supplementation yeah. seems like a good idea, but there's so much stuff out there. You know, there's probably like a hundred million supplements on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, yes, we do need to supplement, especially if you are a performance individual, whether you're performing at work, in life, or in sport, or all three of those, mm -hmm. you know, just because of the demineralization and over farming of the soils, our foods aren't as nutrient dense as they once were. So and there's actually a really great book called The Dorito Effect that talks about that. Just because, again, like of the over farming and turning over the soil, turning over the soil, the, like a piece of broccoli does not have the same nutrients now as it did in the early 20s or, or 30s as well. So, you know, using supplementation is critical for keeping our system going the way we need it to go. So, yes, and I'm not a huge fan of taking a whole lot of supplements, but I do believe that based on the individual and what their needs are, supplementation is absolutely critical. What are some of the core, you know, that we should be using? I always supplement with magnesium. You know, there's a magnesium complex that, that we actually have in our Stay Ready line that we just launched. 80% of people are magnesium deficient regardless of, of if they train or not. Like you sweat, you're losing electrolytes and we lose a lot of magnesium. So a, a good magnesium supplement is critical for heart function, for muscular recovery, for stress management. I like to use an organ complex for my multivitamin just because yes, multivitamins are great. We have those too. You can do that as well. But in, in my studies, in my understanding, if it can come from a natural source, that's where I prefer to get it. So a good organ complex that gives you you know, the, the liver, the spleen, the heart, the kidney, that's going to give you that, that micronutrient balance. I also love uh, a greens supplement, you know, any type of organic greens, because again, those are going to give you those micronutrients that you're not going to get from eating a lot of vegetables. You know, cause you've got, you got to think about it that you know, if I pick, say again, a piece of broccoli, but well, from the time it is picked from the ground to it gets to the store could be a week or two. And then it sits there. Then I get it. Then I cook it and I kill out. Then I cook out a lot of those, those nutrients. So supplementing with a greens supplement is in my mind critical because it's going to give you those nutrients that you're missing out on. Yeah. Yeah. We just seal fit, seal fit electro green just came out and that's a pretty exceptional product. A lot of people have been ditching their athletic greens for it. It's a combination of the all, all natural greens, very robust greens product combined with an electrolyte. It's kind of kill two birds with one stone. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Now, another thing I would say is, is a good omega-3. There was a study that came out in 2013. I think it, the attempt was to demonize the omega-3s because they were really doing well, but also in the extraction process, if there are chemicals used, what the article showed was that a lot of the omega-3s out there 
are more toxic and inflammatory than anti-inflammatory. Yeah, so you have to be very cautious with the with the brand that you use. The one I've always recommended and used, there's several. Nordic Naturals is a great brand. Carlson's is the one I go to now. I've been using that for a long, long time. Because the optimal goal with regard to protein intake was, you know, obviously we want you to consume grass-fed, grass-finished meats, all that good stuff. But that's just not a reality for most people. But the unfortunate side of that is the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio in most commercial beefs, even in some of the grass-fed stuff, the omega-6 ratio is super high. Omega-3 ratio is low. Well, that creates inflammation. So supplementing with a quality fish oil to help balance that 6 to 3 ratio out and also to minimize and mitigate some of the inflammation that we create in our body from life, training, all those things is really critical. Yeah, that's fascinating. Do you think balance can be found or how do you uh, coach people when it comes to this idea of like, hey, my, my life seems completely out of whack. You know, I'm, mm. I'm really out of balance. I need to come back into balance. Is it possible? Yeah. Yes, it is. It is. It just, it takes some time and it's going to take intention and it's going to take the individual really looking in the mirror and saying, what do I need to balance myself? You know, because a lot of men, like I, I do a lot of work with successful men that have put their careers and finances at the forefront. And unfortunately, they've let their body slip. They let their mind slip. They let their relationship slip. So helping them understand and create balance of, hey, yes, that's important, but also we need to move our bodies. We need to take care of our system with nutrition. You know, you need to have healthy relationships. And the way that I live and the way that I teach and coach is balance is critical. There's no point where you can't establish it to some degree or another. You know, for example, I'm working with a gentleman right now in North Texas, and he's in this really, really fast time where he's up at 4 a.m., he's out of the door by 5.30, and he's in the farming industry. So he's all over the place all day. He called the other day. He's like, Mo, I just don't know what to do with my workouts. I can't train for an hour. So I said, okay, well, what can we do? Going back to that can versus can't. You can get up and you can knock out 15, 20 push-ups. And then when you go somewhere, you can do the same thing. And we can do this and make it a cumulative effort through the course of the day. So when you get home, you're like, yes, I did it. That's balance for him right now. If he's driving a tractor, every time you get on that tractor before you do 20 burpees, right? You get off the tractor. Yeah, exactly. 20 exactly, push-ups, exactly. Right? It's weaving yeah. it into your life, right? Balance has to be established. That's the way the world works. That's the way nature works. That's the way everything works. Like life is a, is a cycle of balanced activities that work synergistically with each other. And it's just about you finding what you need to create balance for yourself in that time and understand that might change and it probably will and should change over time so like we talked about metabolic flexibility having the mental flexibility to go okay i'm going a little bit too far in this direction i need to bring it back over here yeah recovery so we didn't talk about recovery but i think a lot of the issues around balance are due to overcommitment, right? If people overcommit, they're too plugged into the negative stuff, right? So they're, they're actually have their TV on in their home or their offices, and they're just getting soaked with all that incessant negative energy. So that really makes them feel kind of chaotic and out of balance. And, and the pace of that stuff is crazy fast. You know, I don't know about you, but I, I haven't had a TV on in my home in over 30 years. So the only time I ever see TV is usually when I'm walking through an airport and I'll pause just to see what the crazies are up to. And it's actually very jarring to my psyche because of the, the pace of imagery and the, the speed that everyone's talking. I'm like, wow, like this is how every, everyone's being trained and stimulated. It's kind of it's awful. But then also recovery when it comes to training, you know, people like CrossFit was awful about this, right? It's like hardcore every single day, six, seven days a week. And Where's the recovery time, you know? Everything that you do hard needs kind of a commensurate pause in recovery time, right? In training, like you need to have a deload week sometimes. Right. You know, because you got to remember like when you're training your body, especially if we're talking about physical, you're training your muscles, but you're training your nervous system. And your nervous system can only take so much before it breaks. You know, then you it runs into adrenal fatigue, then it runs into injury per, uh, mm -hmm. risk that's elevated. So yeah, absolutely like l learning to go, okay, well, how do I feel today? If you wake up and you're exhausted and you're tired, that's not the day for you to go hard. Right. And that's not the day for you to go, suck it up, man. If you're training for an event, like if you're training for Kokoro and you wake up on a Thursday and you're like, damn, I don't want to do this today, go do it. Because <laughs> you, you have to know how to do that under stress. But even with that, you know, if I'm training, like when I was training for, for Kokoro, you know, I, I injured my back about a month into it. I was like, okay, what can I do to 
create balance to help myself recover, but still prepare for this event, right. you know, and I was able to do that. But with everyday people, recovery is the key because, and you know this, everyone that listens to your show knows this. When you train your system physically, you're breaking your body down. You're right. creating micro tears. You're actually depleting your immune system. Right. You're not making it better. So the recovery happens when you rest, when you allow yourself just to be, you know, right. in meditation, the meditation teacher training, that's one of the first principles they teach is be a human being, not a human doing. Right. Yep. So oftentimes less is more. Less and we can more. then focus on the quality versus the quantity of stuff. Right. So I agree with that. You need that kind of downtime, even after periods of deep work, right? So research has come out saying, yeah, after every kind of period of deep, intensive focus, just pause breathe and allow the brain to kind of like settle down and to assimilate there. Otherwise you get overloaded. And this is one of the reasons you have that kind of cognitive decline in later in the afternoon is you're just overloaded your, your psyche's ability to, to process all the information, all the learning, all the lessons, and then you're going to miss a lot. You're not going to learn optimally if you don't pause and, and just allow that assimilation after every deep work period. The other thing that's key though, is that when it comes to physical training, I think people think that recovery means to do nothing or to do no movement. And, and that's not true either, right? So I, I put yoga, I put you know long walks in nature, in the recovery, sometimes even a, a long, slow distance uh, jog. There, there's a lot you can do in the recovery kind of category that, that's not just sitting around making you feel like, oh, I'm not being productive, right? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, like all of my clients I work with, there's like, it's seven days a week of movement, right. but right. they I have in-programmed mobility and breath and that right. mobility and breath is to open up the body or like you said it might be man get out on your bike and just go for a ride on a one to ten scale if ten's the hardest one's the easiest you're at a one maybe a two mm -hmm. if you go out, like you said go out for a walk go for a swim go get out in nature mm -hmm. but just allowing the body to reset and it's not about not moving it's about moving smartly for what the goal is so with with mobility practice like when you do kakor yoga when you're doing it in a restorative manner, that light, easy movement that is coincided with the breath is increasing the blood flow, which is increasing nutrient transport into those fatigued, tired muscles, right. which is helping the healing process. Like we want to be still in meditation. We want to be still when we're in process of thought, maybe, or just observing. But for the day, yes, we need to get up. We need to move because that's how we were created. We are designed to get up and hunt and gather and build and create. Right. We gotta wrap this up pretty soon here, but what's your uh, morning ritual like? Yeah, so I get up every morning, and first thing I do is I think of my gratitudes. I got a list of about fifty guys that I send gratitudes to every morning, so I think about that. I go downstairs. Actually, first thing I do is my dog comes up and we hang out for a couple minutes, <laughs> <laughs> and it literally just gets some oxytocin. Call, is yep, he, and he comes up real slow and like snuggles up in my neck, That's and sweet. then the other dog comes up. So anyway, after that, I get up, I make coffee. And as the coffee's brewing, I'm sending out my gratitude texts to my guys. And then once I do done with that, we started doing this ritual. We'll, we'll get a little salt water, about 16 ounces of salt water, go out in the backyard, stand barefoot in the grass and watch the sunrise mm. so we can reset the circadian rhythm and just kind of connect and ground. You drink the salt water or what's the salt water for? Yeah, it's not a lot. It's like a pinch, basically electrolytes. But I'll use uh, Celtic gray salt or a pink Himalayan salt. That's like a sun, sun salutation right there. Just being an honor for the sun and honor for the day. Yeah. And my wife, Kirsten, comes out with me. We'll stand there and she'll say, you know, there's a, a Norse prayer to uh, Swelu to the sun of thank you for your energy. Thank you for this. It's just a beautiful process that we'll, we'll come inside and, you know, we'll put on some music or we'll, we'll do a meditation. I did a sweat lodge last week. So now I'm really, and I've been into this for a while, but I like to listen to tribal drums. So I'll just listen to the drumming and get connected with my breath for about 10 minutes. Then I get up and start the day. I usually go train first. I'll eat a little bit. I'll drink my coffee and then I go to the gym and I train and then I start the day. So I make sure I take care of my needs first and then I can operate better as a business runner, <laughs> mm -hmm. as a husband, as a friend. I fill my cup and then I take care of everyone else. That's such an important principle to kind of double click on and then we'll wrap it up. Yeah, you, you can't serve others if you're all broken down and burned out and suffering. If you're leading an organization or, you know, doing anything of service, which everybody should be in service, even if you're doing like a solitary endeavor, like trying to be the best ultra run in the world, do it in service, right? Mm. To something higher than yourself, right? That's principle number one. But you know, to take care of yourself every day for the average person. Like, that's why I think the morning, we call it winning in your mind, you know, before you step foot in the battlefield. It's not just the mind, it's the body-mind. You take care of it, you fill, I love that, what you said, you fill the cup, and then that cup will stay full, and, and as you 
as you give it from the cup to others during the day, it kind of <laughs> refills itself. Absolutely. That's so cool. Hey, everyone. This is Mark Devine, founder of Seal Fit and Unbeatable Mind. And I'm super stoked to announce that my new book, Uncommon, is due out from St. Martin's Press this summer, July 16th. And we've launched a pre-order campaign. You can learn more about that at readuncommon.com to try to get early awareness for the book, which I hope will help a lot of people, where I go and do a deep dive on the five mountains of personal mastery, physical, mental, emotional, intuitional, and spiritual. Uncommon, simple principles for an extraordinary life. Check it out at readuncommon.com. And thank you for your support and being part of the change that you want to see in this world. Hoo-ya. Divine out. Mo, you rock. Where, where can people learn more about you, Brute Force, et cetera? Yeah, as far as, uh, far as the company, Brute Force, you can check us out. We're at BruteForceTraining.com. Mm-hmm. You can also follow us on Instagram, at BruteForceTraining. Um, mm-hmm. Check out all the stuff that we have. We have a really cool app that is designed for anyone just starting out in the fitness to firefighters, police, to military, mm-hmm. really try to make that app as robust as possible for people. So cool. just helping you out with everything that you need to, to be ready for anything. And then as far as my personal stuff with my own coaching and things like that, my Instagram handle is hunt underscore prosper. And the reason behind that, it's it's actually got it from my wife. She gave me that name, but it's not about hunting. It's about if you want something, whatever that is in life, you need to go hunt for it then you prosper. Nice. So it's hunt underscore prosper on Instagram. I try to put out a lot of movements right now, uh, different things with kettlebells, body weight, and then some motivational quotes and videos and things like that. Nice. And the supplements, are they available at Amazon? They're not available on Amazon just yet. They are available at BruteForceTraining.com. We have six in total. Right now on the website, we have our grass-fed whey, chocolate, and vanilla. We've got a pre-workout that's not a super stimulated pre-workout. We have a multivitamin. And then we're launching this coming week, we have a collagen peptide. We have an organ complex. And then we have that magnesium that I talked about earlier. And you get that all at BruteForceTraining.com. Perfect. Probably don't need anything else. That's it. (laughs) Yeah. Mo, thanks so much for your time today, Rock. I appreciate your your wisdom and your enthusiasm, and for and your example. Right, you're doing the work and showing up My every pleasure. day. Ooh, yeah. Honored to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Ooh, yeah.